Welcome to another episode of Creative Cooking. I'm your host, David Santos. Are you tired of the same old chicken recipes? If you are, then stick around because we're going to make chicken cutlets served with a cheater aioli sauce that will blow your mind. So we need to start by making the aioli sauce because we want to make this about a half an hour ahead of making the chicken. And this recipe calls for two cloves of garlic, but I'm using one because of this gorgeous garlic that I bought. It's one of those jumbo garlics. It's got that nice magenta streak in it. Um, very flavorful and, and very easy to work with. So I'm using just one clove. Keep that in mind. And what I'm doing here is I'm using a microplane to grate that garlic so we get create as much surface area as possible. You could use a garlic press if you wanted to, but this method works pretty well too. So if you don't have one of those graters, these are, these are pretty nice to have. And then the next thing you want to do is add in the lemon juice along with the salt. I'm using kosher salt. And all the uh, ingredient, ingredient amounts are in the comments section below. Give that a good stir and then let that sit for about five minutes. No more than five minutes so that you can extract all the garlic oils into the lemon juice, but also to acidify the solids. And once that's happened, you can go ahead, put in some olive oil and um, a cup of mayonnaise. And again, like I said, this is a store-bought mayonnaise. I don't see anything wrong with doing it that way, but if you want to make your own mayonnaise, go right ahead and do it. All right, and it wouldn't be complete without some freshly ground black pepper and you can use as much or as little as you want now bear in mind this is a very tasty sauce and it's great on burgers it's it's great for dipping french fries um i've i've made this quite a bit and my wife really loves it and so do i so anyway uh, yeah you want to just uh, hit that with a whisk and beat that vigorously because what you're doing is recreating an emulsion with the mayonnaise, which is an emulsion, but you've just added some lemon juice and some oil to that. So by whisking it very vigorously, it'll emulsify again. And if need be, thin it out with a little bit of water. And when you're done with that, um, remove that to a glass container or a plastic container. Try to avoid metal, because this is very acidic. And let that go in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. And that's about as much time as we would need to prepare the chicken. Now let me show you another trick here. Because we are going to cut fillets, we also want to pound out the thickest parts. We have a very uniform chicken. And I used to use plastic wrap and I, I realized, hey, wait a minute, that stuff is too thin. Okay? What if I used one of these and just cut the edges off, leaving the bottom so that you basically have a hinge? And it works out beautifully because now you can open this up and um, pound out your meats and when you're done you open it back up again and you wash it and just put it back in the cupboard and reuse it it beats the heck out of sticking your hand in the bag which is what I used to do right so you learn a few things as you go and then I like to clean up that chicken before I pound it out I don't like the excess fat so I just get in there with a pair of kitchen shears trim away the excess and what I'm doing here is identifying where the thick part of the chicken breast is from the thin part when you find that I call it a knuckle go ahead and cut that piece free and then using your hand lay your hand flat and curl your fingers up and make sure your knife is sharp by the way and just using a sawing action cut that fillet in half and now they're approximately as thick as you would want them to be but we, we are going to pound them out Again, find the, where the thick meets the thin and cut there. And then cut the, the thick part of the chicken uh, crosswise. All right, so now you have fairly uniform pieces of chicken. You could do it, you could cook them just the way they are, but I still like to pound them out and you'll see. And that's fairly simple to do. Just take a couple of pieces, put them in between the plastic, and then use, if you're using a mallet like this, make sure you use the smooth, smooth side of the mallet. You don't want to poke holes in that plastic. That other thing is, I think, for tenderizing meat or cubing steak or something to that effect. And then 
you, you're just going to pound it out at the most thickest part of the chicken and just try to get it uniform and bear in mind also that when you cook this that chicken will will plump back up again it'll, it'll start to tighten towards the center so you want to get that middle the thickest part about the same as the the outer edges of the chicken and you'll have a very uniform piece of chicken which is good for eating and also good for sandwiches season both sides with some salt and freshly ground pepper dredge it in flour in preparation for frying you don't have to dredge the chicken in flour if you don't want to but I find that it helps with spatter and I think that it also gives us a nicer browning effect on the outside Next, heat up an iron skillet, or whatever skillet you have, preferably one with a thick bottom. And there we have one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil and one tablespoon of butter. We'll let the butter melt into that. And um, yeah, once that's melted in, add your chicken to the pan in batches. You don't want to overcrowd the pan. I worked out that uh, I could do two batches of three and make a note of the size of the chicken. Okay, see how it's going edge to edge on the pan? But after it's had a chance to cook, it tightens back up again. That's what I was talking about earlier. So cook that for about three minutes per side until you see some browning taking place. Try not to overcook the chicken, just, just until it gets lightly brown and then remove it to a wire rack. And the reason why I like using a wire rack it, it, it's so that we don't wick away any moisture from the chicken and it stays crispy so depending on how you intend to serve it I just think this is the best way and besides we want this chicken to cool down to room temperature and here's the reason we're using an aioli sauce which is made with mayonnaise when mayonnaise comes in contact with hot food the mayonnaise will break in other words the oil will separate separate from the rest of the emulsion so by allowing the chicken to cool, we can go ahead and dress it with the aioli sauce and it won't melt or separate. So now take a look at that chicken. Are you kidding me? This stuff was absolutely delicious. If I had some brioche buns, I probably would have made sandwiches. But my wife and I just ate this just the way it was with nothing else and we just thoroughly enjoyed it. So I hope you try this recipe. And if anything at all, I hope you learned how to make a cheater aioli sauce that is absolutely fantastic on burgers, dipping fries, or a roast beef sandwich. You can use this in place of any dressing that you use on pretty much any sandwich. So anyway, folks, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Join us next week for another great video made for people who like to cook. Bon appetit.